and, there, and it's not just happening in this area, it's happening in others. And I've seen even some, some of the people I've known that the devil's trying to pull them off into that. And say, oh, well, we're free, we're free. No, I'll tell you what's happening. The world is creeping into the church. You don't hear much about holiness preached anymore, do you? Holiness is not closed line preaching, folks. It's separate yourself from the world. Amen. you got to realize the greatest value there is is Jesus. Amen. Come on, amen. Yeah. All the riches in the world are not worth losing Him. Amen. There's so much to gain too much to lose. Amen. Amen. Look at Zechariah now, 12. We're living in. Folks, I tell you, I, I just, I've got word. I almost don't want to look at the news. <laughs> because it's like seeing the scriptures fulfilled right in front of our eyes. Zechariah chapter 12. Of course, if you just look, look at the evening news, you'll still be dumbfounded. I mean, you'll be clueless, right? Yeah, because they're not telling you. But there's so much stuff available now. You know, if they, now they say if you have a question, Google it, right? Yeah. <laughs> our refrigerator went out on our camper, so I Googled it. Figure out what to do. And I'm sure glad I did. I'd have something up if I had. I mean, knowledge is good. Yeah. Now look at this verse of Scripture, chapter 12, look at verse 9. It shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Once you listen to me, we're living in a time when this Scripture is slowly being fulfilled. It's going to be fulfilled over a period of several years. I don't know how many... But we're looking, folks, let's listen. The world is turning against Israel. Yes, yes, yes. The hate for Jews is right. Did you know that uh, a lot of the Jews have fled uh, Paris, France because they're afraid for their life? Now you think about that. We're living, we're living in a time right now. I, folks, we're living in the days preceding the coming of Jesus. Yes, and the reason. See, see, you think, well, how do you know that? Listen, Israel, the Jews were scattered throughout the whole world. They had no nation. In 1492, Spain expelled all, gave them two weeks to leave Spain and get out with just the possessions they could carry. And the state took control of all their... Can you imagine a country singling out a group of people and saying, we don't like you. Get out. I'd say that's racism. Yeah. True racism. Amen. And they had to flee. But see what you need to understand. Why has the devil hated these people so much? Because through them, God brought this Bible right here. Every author of this Bible was a Jew. Every one of them. All of the covenants of God came through these people. Jesus was born to a Jewish woman. He was born in Israel. Come on, are you listening to me? Now because Israel was so disobedient, God scattered them. That was their punishment. They left their land and their land began. Do you know that nothing hardly was ever grown in over in what they called it Palestine. That was the name given it years ago I think by the Turks, but they didn't hardly grow anything over there because it's rocky, desert land. But you go over there now and it has blossomed like the Garden of Eden. You know why? Because God's allowed His people to come back into that land and He's blessing it and they are producing food for that little nation. They are feeding other countries. Amen. And it's just amazing to see the miraculous things God doing. But we're living in a time, folks, you're going to see the hatred for the Jews increase. And you're going to see Israel become isolated. 
But I want you to listen to me. God is using them as a witness to the world. I read an article, this is mind blowing, where Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, gave Bibles with the New Testament in it to the soldiers in his army. But in our military, they're taking them away. Read an article said, will we, will we eventually have a military of atheists? Think about it. What is the devil? The devil's behind all this. Because he wants to remove God from everything. He's removed God from our schools. He's removed God from our institutions. And, and the godless thing is just crept into so many things we have now. That now if you're a Christian in many places, depending on where you live, you know, you know, people look at you different than you used to. Come on. We're living in perilous times, aren't we? We need to wake up and realize, what is God? You know, you know, you can just go on and say, you know, hit the snooze button. And spiritually go back to sleep and say, well, Brother Ford, I'll wait until it gets a lot worse before I do anything. Not me. Not me. I know what God's saying to me right now. He's he been talking to me about a spiritual battle that we're in right now. And those on the front lines are, are, are really more aware of it than others. And I was thinking, Lord, Lord, woke me up this morning and began to speak to me. And uh, he began, it's like, he, he, said, he, he said, you know what a prophet is? A prophet, he says, I allow him to see things that other people can't see. He said, you've read in Ezekiel, you've read Jeremiah, I've read those books. He said, you ever notice Ezekiel was caught up in the spirit. And he saw things. He, he saw uh, horses. He saw men with battle axes. Now, they weren't regular men. They were spirit beings. And he saw battles that was going on in the heavenlies that was controlling things on the earth. Now, listen, listen to me. God began to show me. He said, son, there's a battle raging right now for the survival of this nation. A spiritual battle. And he said the church is losing. He said the reason. He said the reason it's losing. Is because they've lost their edge. And they, they're not praying. They're not seeking my face. He said the devil has succeeded. In distracting so many in the church. I'm not saying everybody. Of course not. But he's distracted people. With the world. With making a living. With all of the things that we get caught up with, Amen. that just consumes our time. It's like we don't have time. It's like we, we only give God time if we think we have time. Hmm? The other night when I was in pain, I did the only thing I could think about was Jesus. <laughs> That's all I want. I didn't want anything yet. Well, I didn't want relief, but I wanted Him. I know He was. How do you spell relief? J E S U S. -U -S. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I saw the other a few weeks back where uh, our country, our nation, folks, this, this is horrible, released secret information that Israel has nuclear bombs. Did you know that's when people suspected it, but did you know back in the 80s when uh, they allowed, we, our country helped Israel get nuclear weapons that it was totally kept secret and it was not to be released but our people in Washington decided to do that. It was a breach of confidence against Israel. And I am totally, I'm thankful that nothing happened in this country. But I believe, and we got, I'll tell you what, you folks, we got to pray, pray, pray for our leaders. That they will not make the wrong decisions. God showed me if the United States does not support Israel and we get to the point where we're almost not supporting them, that God is going to bring judgment big time on America. And I know people don't want to hear that. But I believe it's going to come in the form of an earthquake. And it'll be more than just an earthquake. earthquake. It's going to be a financial earthquake. That'll rattle this nation. 
I've been warning people for years, and then I got where I just, I, I just hardly want to talk about it anymore. Because, you know, a lot of people say, well, nothing's happened, Brother Bill. It's been four or five years now, Brother Bill. But, you know, Jeremiah preached for years and years before the judgment came. Yeah. yeah. And what we need to understand is, well, we are living in a time when we need to have our ear. You know, maybe the Indian to put his ear to the ground to hear the horses coming. Because of the vibration. Yeah. Y'all know when the train's coming too, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. God, God is speaking. Listen, the church is, is has everything it needs. Except the willingness. Yeah. Come on, amen. Yeah. God said he's going to look at Haggai. I know these are hard books to find because they're all wedged in there. Together, I just flip through till I get to it. <laughs> All these bookmarkers, I guess. See, I didn't find it. I went right through there and missed it. Oh, no wonder. I was right there. Haggai. Can you imagine being named Haggai? Or Habakkuk? Oh, they call him for short. Back? <laughs> <laughs> Look at chapter 2, verse 6. For thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more it is a little time, and I will shake the heavens and the earth, and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of the nations, and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord. Now, God says, I, I mean, remember when God came down and visited Moses and gave him the Ten Commandments, he shook the earth. Well, this next time he says, I will shake the heavens. Now, this is what I want you to listen very carefully to me. What does that mean? There are so many prophecies about how I many of the Bible said there be signs in the heaven. It says the powers, this is very heaven, the powers of heaven shall be what? Shaken. How I many know when you shake some, something and it's loose, it falls? You know, you get a bit dangerous, you know? When I was a kid, we used to climb up a tree and shake the limbs and make that one fall off. You ever do that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, God is shit right now. We're, see, a lot of people think, you know, tribulation, rapture, and all that's going to happen. It just, and it, it's, been ha it's been happening over a period of years. It began years ago. And we're living in a time, I believe the second horse is already out of the gate. First was a white horse. Second was a red horse. How do you know there's no peace in this earth? Peace has been taken from the earth. And we're already there. Hmm. We're living there now. Now, now. now listen, God said he's going to shake the heaven. There, that's he's talking about a spiritual battle that's happening right now in the heavens. I've been seeing glimpses of it in my spirit. And God says there's a battle. He said if you saw the battle going over this nation right now, Satan is fighting, trying to take this nation down. Because first of all, he has to get a nation to depart from mo mo from good morals yeah. 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 to become morally corrupt. And the further he can take it from that, the further down he can take it and gain control of things. Look at Revelation chapter 13. And I'm going to tell you what the Lord spoke to me just real recently. Verse 1 says, I stood on the sand of the sea, which represents the multitudes of people, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his ten horns crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. How many of you know what blasphemy is? 
is to speak against God in it. What is this beast? It is the system of the devil. It's that simple. It is godlessness and lawlessness. How many of you know that we see that increasing in our nation more and more? Godlessness and lawlessness rising more and more. But what John is seeing here is not only the system, because when he talks about the ten heads and the horns, you know what he's talking about? The tentacles of the beast, the Antichrist. And when you think of Antichrist, you just think of one person. Well, there's been many Antichrists.